again this morning in the book of Exodus, chapter 36, verses 8 to 38. Yeah, you heard me. No, we're not going to read all those. Let's just take a couple of them here. Starting at verse 8, all the skillful men among those who were performing the work made the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twisted linen and blue and purple and scarlet material with cherubim, the work of a skillful workman. Bezalel made them. And it goes on for another all the way out to verse 38. So, yeah, there's going to be a couple spots here where we take long swaths just in one. I'm not going to focus into tiny minutia and details and little differences. We've sort of hit this before, but the part here that's kind of interesting to me is how little actual explanation the text has about the, the meaning of the symbolism. Uh, there's virtually no explanation uh, of what is the color, that this is scarlet, this is purple, this is blue, there's 50 of these and 75 of those. There's very little discussion of that, almost none. And so when the Bible outlines that, when the Bible tells us X means Y, why that's very useful to us, and it shows us that God wants us to understand that X means Y. But when the meaning is not uh, laid out, it could be that it's laid out in some other place and it doesn't need to be laid out here, or it could be that the depth of meaning that we might look to find, like every single piece, every color, every every shape, every item has a deep meaning. It might be that that's not the way it is. Some of these things may be functional. You know, you simply need tent pegs. It doesn't mean that because there's X number of tent pegs. So it doesn't particularly have a spiritual significance. So we want to be wise. We want to be careful. We want to be uh, trying to let God show us in his word what he designs to show us. So it's interesting the lack of... Um, detail in terms of explaining the meaning. Now, another thing that goes with this is like when Jesus is telling the parables in the Gospels. A lot of these parables, you know, they have several pieces in them, but it doesn't mean that every single piece carries meaning or drives the parable forward. Usually there's one main point or one maybe a minor point in there with it. Usually all the pieces of the parable don't stand up. You know, they there's a point that's being made. There's kind of a a particular statement or a particular meaning that's there through the parable. Not every single element is meant to carry it some kind of deep allegorical meaning. There are some allegorical pieces in the parables, but not that many. Now, what we have here again is the, the sanctuary is kind of an enacted parable almost in itself. All the pieces, all the significance, symbolic meaning and significance, but Again, it's not laid out just with super precision. This means this and this means that. So that's a warning to you and I not to go beyond what God has revealed. It's also a warning to study more deeply. Uh, perhaps in other places we'll see, you know, this color has appears to have this significance. This number of items appears to have this significance. So we compare scripture with scripture we don't get overwrought, but we take seriously what God has revealed. And we are also careful about the things that he hasn't been uh, elaborated precisely on because there might be some good solid meanings there for us, but we've got to be a little more tentative because God hasn't absolutely laid it out. Okay, so we're not going to go into the detail here, but that'll consume all the rest of chapter 36. And let's carry on tomorrow and go further. We're in the last section here of the book where the tabernacle is being constructed. It's going to be enacted. It's going to be put into operation. And so there's a lot of uh, repetition from previous sections, but in here it's all being built up and made to be ready to use. See you tomorrow.